guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with a video of some romances I think are going to be five stars. So this is a five star predictions video. I have a big stack here. I was like running out of breath trying to hold them up for my thumbnail. There's a lot, and they range from like newer releases to like literally release this month to one arc, and the rest are pretty old. So I'm very excited. We have a mix of contemporary, a mix of different genres, a good handful of super angsty ones because I feel like I need to save the angsty for a special occasion because I thrive on angst and just lose myself in the book and I'm like but it needs to be like a special occasion to read this angsty romance so I don't read these there's one people have been telling me to read it for literal years and I recently posted about it because the special edition came I can show you the special edition once I get to that book but I'm gonna go ahead and get to you all the books that I think are gonna be five star reads for me and you can convince me to read them because I am annoying and I push them off because I think I'm gonna love them so the first one is going to be fourth wing by Rebecca Yaros this one comes out in April I believe or May. It's May 2nd. I have to read this soon. This one is a dragon fantasy romance. And now I got to meet Rebecca Yaros at Readers Take Denver. I've met her a handful of times before. I love her. I read Wilder by her. I read The Last Letter. She's amazing. She's very emotional. It was funny because I was doing my interview with Teddy Hamilton and he said Rebecca Yaros without a doubt makes him cry. And he had to like stop recording because he was cr like heavily crying when he was narrating one of her books, which I absolutely love that. She's a very emotional writer. However, she told me that that when I met her because I was like oh my gosh I'm so excited uh, about your new fantasy she had art copies at her table and was passing them out so I did get this signed to me and she said she actually started with writing fantasy she wrote a fantasy no one wanted it so she kind of fell into romance so she's really excited that they want a fantasy and book two also comes out this year so these are I think it's like a school for dragon riders and it sounds really fun yes so they're dragon riders and she has to join the candidates to become the elite dragon riders it sounds so good. Friends, enemies, lovers. If you graduate or die. So, this sounds so good. I am so, so excited. The problem also with a lot of these books is they're long. So this one actually is only 500 pages, but I feel like it's decent for a fantasy, but very excited for this one. Another one, though, that is a new release that I want to read because of a narrator, too, is going to be Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. This one just came out this week, and Zachary Weber, I had him on my channel, and he was chatting about this book, how he loves Abby Jimenez, and this one has really great anxiety rep, and I'm excited to read this one. I kind of wanted to wait to read the audio, but I feel like it's going to have a huge wait. I don't even remember if I reserved it or not, so I might use an audible credit on it just because I want to read it and I want to hear Zach narrate it because he narrated part of your world and that was amazing. So this one, I think like her brother needs a kidney. Yes. And the hero's a doctor and they start like writing letters to each other and I think that he ends up donating his kidney to her brother. I love Abby Jimenez. I think I've only had one that I didn't love. Love, which is her second book, Life's Too Short, but everything else I've loved by her. So high hopes for this one and I feel like everybody loves her as well. So everyone's been hyping this book. I want to read it. And then these next two are two new releases from last week and I am dying. So I'm filming this a little early. So I'm posting this next week, but so these came out two weeks ago. Elizabeth O'Rourke. I love her. Like Parallel and Waking Olivia were my two of my absolute favorite books last year. I need to read more of her backlist. I'm not because I want to savor her books, but this one came out and this one's actually really short. So it's just 300 pages and I'm like, can I just read it in a day? Um, apparently it's super, super angsty. People have been telling me the audio is amazing, but I just want to like just read this and binge the entire thing. So this one is, he was my boyfriend's best friend in the bane of my existence and I wanted to hate him. It's an angsty second chance for in romance. Literally three of my top buzzwords, my two favorite tropes right now, are second chance and friends to lovers. And I'm literally reading an audiobook right now that is both. And I'm dead. I am dead. So this is also forbidden. It's boyfriend's best friend. We know Elizabeth O'Rourke does angst amazingly well, so I am so excited. So excited. I might read this before this video even goes up, honestly, because I'm that excited. I need to read it now. Another one that is also super angsty I've heard and came out last week, aka two weeks ago, is If This Is Love by Julie Ann. This is her new release. I did buy it in Reader's Take Denver, so I got the copy a little bit early, so I got a couple of fun, like, 
prints and a sticker and then she also signed this for me and I want to read it. I love the horse aspect. I love that. Give me small town any day, every day. Farm, yes. Says he's mine. Don't ever forget that. He lives in the barn, a cowboy, and she lives in a castle. So the only person that loved her dies and he's there and she's looking at him as someone more and he's marrying the woman she hates. So much angst. I'm so so excited for this one. I love Julie Ann too. I've been reading a lot of her backlist and I need to read more. So this one I need to read for Lucy too. I almost grabbed that down from my shelves. Also The Lost Fisherman I haven't read yet, but The Naked Fisherman was really good. So hi on my TBR. I think I'm gonna love it. I'm nervous. I, I want to put it off because I think I'm gonna love it so much. The other one that I'm gonna putting off because it's long and I think I'm gonna be obsessed is Saving Six by Chloe Walsh. So I read Binding 13. I absolutely loved it. I need to read book two. This one is Joey and Aoife's story. And Tori, I was talking to her about it, and she told me that this is actually a, a flashback, kind of like a prequel. This is before when they were getting together, I think. So this is when they were teenagers and they were falling in love because Binding 13, they're already a couple. And I thought this was going to show like their experience with things that happened in Binding 13. This isn't actually when they got together. And so we get to see them as a couple developing and growing. And I am so excited. Shout out to Sam from Sam Reads a Little for sending me her extra copy. Thank you so much to you. I just actually also ordered Keeping 13 because that was actually cheap on Amazon. So I ordered that, but I'm so excited to have this. I'm so excited. I'm gonna love it. I'm gonna love it. I don't even, I can't even tell you the plot. <laughs> I don't even know the plot. They just meet and fall in love. And I think it's complicated. So it's gonna be good. Very, very excited for that one. Another one I'm reading because I've seen this everywhere. Everybody has been reading this book, and that's In a Jam by Kate Canterbury. I think that Jason Clark narrates this audio, though, and I'm very intrigued by that. He's one of my favorite narrators. I got to interview him on my channel, and this one, I believe, is a small town, and... Oh, her fiance just called off her wedding and she has to be married within a year. So she needs to get married to someone who is it friends to lovers. It said he's loved her back in high school and never told her. And now he's a single dad and I think he has to get married to her. So I've heard it's a good uh, small town and this is the special edition from Hello Lovely. It's super, super cute. I do love the original cover though with like the berries, but I've heard amazing things. I really want to try out Kate Canterbury. I read one of her novellas, which I didn't love, love, but I'm like not a novella person. So hopefully I like this one. Another one that I grabbed because it was right on top of this one. And I love this author. And the first book to this series is one of my favorites of the year so far. That is Bittersweet Heart by Helena Hunting. Helena Hunting? Helena Hunting. Or H. Hunting. I read Little Lies absolutely phenomenal and I do have the audio of this one. Teddy Hamilton does Little Lies. Oh, it was so good but this one is a student professor romance so it's very forbidden but I love the world that she built. I think I like her stuff under H Hunting better because I read Pucked and it's just like very over the top and kind of like raunchy I would say and I liked it. It is the just like a fun hockey romance but I really like her writing in these and the style she takes on these books so Little Lies was one of my favorites of the year so far. I think it was my favorite I read in January so high hopes for this one. Like I said, all I know is that it's a professor student. I think he's also, he is a hockey player. So that makes it better too. So I'm going to read this on audio soon, I hope. And it feels long too. This is over 400 pages as well. Romances are just getting longer and longer. Another one I keep on putting off because I'm almost out of books on this author's backlist and I don't know what I'm going to do with myself when I'm done reading from this author. So that is going to be Lotus by Jennifer Hartman. This one is the story of the boy who was kidnapped and comes back as like an adult or like older teen. Like I don't know if he's like 19, 20. I don't know how old he is, but he does get referenced in, I don't know if it's still beating, in another book by Jennifer Hartman. They mention him and this one, I feel like it's just gonna, I'm gonna be obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with everything she writes. So I haven't read this yet, but I really, really want to. It's so good. I have a special edition too that's gorgeous over there. So I need to read this, but I like I said, I keep on putting it off because I think I'm going to love it and I need to be like saving for a special moment. Like now is the time I'm going to read what could be my favorite book of the year. I just need to read it already. I know I'm annoying, but... I'm excited. Okay, so another fantasy, I think this is the only other fantasy on this list, is going to be Between Wrath and Mercy by Jess Wisecup. I've heard so many good things about this book, and I think my sister even read it too, and she really liked it. So her daughter's taken, 
and she's lived the past 16 years in isolation and now she's trying to find her daughter and I think she has to face the man she never thought she'd see again. So I think that's really fun that it's a single mom fantasy. I feel like we don't see that and a lot of people on YouTube are reading this. This is so long though and the font is so tiny. It is over 500 pages and look at that font. All those words on that page, but I really, really want to read more fantasy romance because I end up loving them. I just don't read a lot because they're so long and I have other things to read, but this one's definitely high on my TBR. This next one, let me grab special edition. I recently got this special edition and so many people were messaging me like, why have you not read this book yet? It's so angsty. It is everything you love. And that is Black Swan Affair. So the Bell edition came. Can we talk about how stunning that is? And then it has like this pretty like feather page uh, like sprayed edges. And I'm obsessed. It's so, so pretty. Oh my gosh. It's so pretty. Look at just like the details of these boxes are so pretty. So this one's pretty and it's like got, I don't know if you can see the text. It's got like shiny. So, so many people told me they're like, why have you not yet read this? Because I think it's like, uh, fiance's brother's romance? Yes. Oh, so she loved him and then they broke up, I think, and she got revenge by marrying his brother. When you involve drama with siblings, I'm sold. Like, give me someone dating two brothers. Give me them falling in love with the, the person's sister. Like, I'm obsessed, so I think I'm gonna love this. It's been on my TBR for so long, though. This came out in 2016, seven years ago. And I think it's been on my TBR for like five of those years and I still haven't read it yet because I think it's gonna be a favorite of mine I just I haven't read it yet. Okay, so the next two are also ones that came out pretty recently and this one I'm saving for a specific video. So it is The Right Move by Liz Tom Ford. I am obsessed with Mile High. That is something I absolutely loved. I read it in January reading my followers favorite romances of 2022 and that was absolutely amazing and I've not seen a single person not like this book. So I think I'm gonna love it. It's fake dating, basketball romance, it's the brother from the heroine of book one and her best friend and I think I'm gonna be absolutely obsessed. So I am reading it for a specific video. I can't tell you a video that is but it's going to be so good and I just love this cover it's so pretty so again another one that I'm like it's gonna be a favorite of the year I just like need to find time to read it and then we also have highest bitter this one went high on my TBR after seeing so many people love this book and the emotions behind it it's a super big age gap Sarah Kate it recently came out but I saw so many people obsessing over it like way more than the other ones so like mercy I saw okay reviews for but like this one people are like the emotions behind it the depth behind the story was amazing and I don't remember what the age gap is it says he's too old he's too rich he's too cocky and he once dated my mother and then they go to Paris I'm excited I really want to read that one high on my TBR as well. And then I also have another angsty romance that I got at a Polycon last year and I still haven't read. And that's from The Embers by Ali Martinez. This one, I believe they are like both married with kids and he ends up saving the wrong person in a fire. He thinks he's saving his wife, but he saves her. Her husband dies, his wife dies. So they have to raise their kids then together and fall in love. Sounds very, very, very emotional, very angsty. And this one's short. So I don't know why I'm intimidated by it. I just think I'm going to love it <laughs> again. So I Put it off but i've seen so many people loving this so i really want to read this one as well another one that i'm being forced to read in april because tori and i are going to do a read along for this series i just downloaded the audiobook i believe zachary weber was the narrator for that one but it has helped me remember by corinne michaels this one is an amnesia romance and that's all i need to know i think that there was something that happened her older brother's dead she's the only eyewitness but she has amnesia so i think there's a bit of suspense in here too which i absolutely love and i think i'm gonna be obsessed with this book and I haven't read it yet. I also bought this at a Polygon because Corinne Michaels was like, yeah, people just like don't really like amnesia. And I was like, hello, it's one of my favorite tropes. So of course I'm gonna read this one. Very, very excited. And then the last two are ones that I'm putting off because they're just so special. And my reading experience is like no other reading this series. And that is going to be the Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hates books in the Magnolia Park series. I read book two, Daisy Hates, after trying to read it last year. And I put it down because I wasn't feeling it. I read the entire thing and I was obsessed. Like five out of five stars. Magnolia Parks, five out of five stars was one of my favorite books of the year last year. So we have books three and four. And I, I don't even know who I like better. Like, do I like Magnolia or Daisy better? I can't even pick because I'm obsessed with them and their stories and BJ and Christian and Julian. Like these stories are so angsty and very character driven. I'm not a character driven person. I need my plot or else I'm very bored. I was not bored with these whatsoever. 
I am obsessed with these characters, obsessed with everything they go through, and I need more. So the covers are also stunning. I need to read these, and I'm going to read them soon. But I'm for sure going to give them five stars. Like, I can tell you that now. And those are all the books that I think are going to be five star reads for me. Let me know if you read any of these and what you want me to read first. I would love to hear. Hopefully I've read these all within, like, the year because... I need to because I think I'm gonna absolutely love all these like there's not a single one that I'm even like hesitant towards I'm like these are no these are for sure five star reads for me so hopefully I get to them soon but that's all I have as always thank you so much for watching and have a good day bye